Well, Razorback fans, I know that it is still the bye week and there's no Razorback football going on this weekend, but it's a question I have to ask to not only Razorback fans, but to the University of Arkansas. How serious are you about this football program? Let's talk about it on today's Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Inside Arkansas Live, which you can catch every weekday starting at noon on Inside Arkansas and InsideArkansas.com. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet. And you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Hope everybody's having a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Friday as you have finally made it to the weekend. So congratulations to all of you. I know you're very excited about it. I am too. But I actually am excited about not having Razorback football. We have some Razorback basketball going on down there in Dallas. And I can't wait to talk a little bit about that. And we will dive into that. It'll be fun to discuss. But uh, today I wanted to get into something a little bit more uh specific dealing with Razorback football and what that is is with Sam Pittman and with Hunter Juracek and with the decisions that are going to be made or not made whatever it is it seems to really be up in the air right now and there's a little bit of reporting going on for different ways there's different people saying different things Uh, they're hearing things it's just it's all over the place and whatnot so uh, one of the things though that I wanted to bring up and I I I brought it up a little bit earlier too earlier this week I should say was about the possibility of Sam Pittman actually returning as head coach. And it came out from On3 yesterday and when we talked about it, and I'm also going to talk about it here because 24-7 Sports and Brandon Marcello had at least their say in what they felt like dealing with Arkansas and Sam Pittman and his current status. And so on 247sports.com, they put together a list, a comprehensive list of coaches that are either on the hot seat or you know possibly moving on or retiring, whatever it is. And there's categories for each one. Well, if you look at the categories themselves for each coach, of course, the top list has to be heating up. Uh, Coaches that are about to get fired or getting really close to being fired. And then you have jobs up in the air. And then you go down to jobs trending toward being safe. And this is the one that Arkansas and Sam Pittman lies in for that, for jobs trending towards being safe. Here's what Brandon Marceau had to say. He said, Arkansas Razorback head coach Sam Pittman had one of the hottest seats entering into the country this year. A 5-4 and four start has cooled the talk around Sam Pittman's job to a degree for a coach who is well-liked by the Razorback administration. Still, Arkansas needs to finish well after back-to-back blowout losses at home after that soured some support. The Razorbacks have a huge rivalry game on deck against Texas and will be the barometer of the program for the fan base and for donor enthusiasm during a season in which NIL investment has improved. To finish with a winning record, Arkansas would need to beat Louisiana Tech in either Texas or Missouri. Of note, there are some in Arkansas circles who wonder how the 62-year-old who is dealing with an ailing hip will continue to coach. So... It seems to be where it stands right now for Sam Pittman that he's it's leaning towards being safe. You know, if you had the uh, the election percentages when uh, during the election when it's going on, and you have a, a favorability, I'd say it's probably about 60 percent favorability towards Sam Pittman staying at Arkansas for another year. Now that can quickly change, as we know there's still three games left. But I thought it was a few things that came out of that paragraph was pretty interesting from Brandon Marcello. One, it says that Sam Pittman is well-liked by the Razorbacks administration. Okay, good. But that really doesn't matter. And it makes me wonder. It, it, I think he's a good man. I really do. Sam Pittman is a, is, a, is a good human being who means well, who is probably – not as uh, terrible as so many other coaches and head coaches when it comes to doing things certain ways. He means well. But I also think that it helps with the administration like him because he's affordable. He's cheaper. And I, I, I just believe that there's probably a little bit of that that goes into it. 
But also, talking about the game against Texas, it's a barometer of the program for the fan base and donor enthusiasm during a season in which NIL investment has improved. So what that kind of tells me, and maybe I'm looking too much into it, but what that kind of tells me is that this game against Texas is going to be huge, where if Arkansas gets embarrassed again, and especially to the hands of Texas at home in Fayetteville, then the boosters and the donors are going to be like, nah, we're done with this. We're done with this. We've donated money, extra money this year. We we stepped up. We got some better NIL and it's improved. But this ain't we ain't doing this. Getting blown out in three or four games at home to SEC opponents. And then more than likely going to finish with a six and six record. Ain't cutting it, not in the cards. We're not doing this again next year. That's what it sounds like to me. But what it also sounds like, though, is that since the NIL has improved this year, to which the season also has improved this year, there might be some that are thinking, hey, well, we got that amount of NIL and we got better. So what happens if we give even more NIL? Do we automatically get better? There's probably some people that believe that. But as was pointed out there by Marcelo, Arkansas needs to beat Louisiana Tech and either Texas or Missouri to get a winning record. Well, as of right now where it stands, folks, I feel confident that Arkansas is going to go and get that sixth win. They're going to be bowl eligible. They're going to beat Louisiana Tech. I'm confident in that. What I'm not confident in is Arkansas winning one of those other games. Obviously, beating Missouri is more likely for Arkansas than beating Texas. I have a bad feeling that if Arkansas beats or that if Arkansas loses to Texas, it's going to be in a very embarrassing fashion. It's there. Sarkeesian's still the coach there. He is still upset and mad about the last time that he came to town in 2021 and got the doors beaten off of him. Uh, I think that there's going to be some revenge in there, and I don't think any prisoners are going to be taken. It has potential to get that way. But I also believe that if Arkansas was to lose to Texas in that fashion, even if you beat Louisiana Tech in Missouri, sure, you, you know you get to four wins in SEC play, you finish seven and five, but it's not exactly going to be inspiring a lot of hope because you lose your games at home. I mean, you beat Tennessee, and that's a great win, but your performances, not only just your games and the wins and losses, your performances of, at home have been, once again, horrible. UAB was a horrible performance. You won, but UAB is one of the worst teams in the country. Your performance against LSU was terrible. Your performance against Ole Miss was terrible. And who knows? May, like you could, you'll could, you still beat Louisiana Tech, but there's a chance your performance will be horrible in that. So when you're doing that type of performances in front of your home fans, which is going to be two years in a row now, two years in a row that Arkansas is worst performances came at home boosters donors people who are paying loads of money to go to those games to sit in those seats it doesn't matter about the wins and losses it matters about them doing that and being entertained by the team on the field which they're not it makes no sense it's stupid but that's where it's at that's where it's at they have a lot in front of them that they got to deal with and deal with these guys and these coaches and staff and everything. They got to figure out how to win at home and maybe at least perform well at home. And that's been a problem. But Barcelona kind of leaves open to the possibility that there's something that may happen with Pittman and that he may not be the coach, maybe he steps down. There's still a level to that. But the point is this, and kind of the question I posed here, can the Hawks show that they're serious? When I say serious, as, as being a serious program, I have dreaded the feeling over the past seven to eight years, if for sure, we'll just say a decade, that Arkansas has not been very serious about their football program. Serious about basketball, serious about baseball, serious about everything, but they haven't been too serious about football. And what I mean by that is... Not accepting average, not accepting bad, not accepting poor, not accepting embarrassment. 
And I'm telling you right now, if Arkansas gets embarrassed against Texas again, beats Louisiana Tech, and even loses to Missouri on the road, if Arkansas doesn't make changes, they're not a serious program. Sorry. Because I see other programs that are a lot more serious. I see an AM program that's serious. I see a Mississippi State program that's more serious. I see Ole Miss that's more serious. I see Missouri that's more serious. I see other programs in this conference and in this league a lot more serious. Because I know what Arkansas's expectations are. I know going out there and, and winning 11 games is not an easy thing to do, and nor should it be expected at Arkansas. I understand that. But after five seasons, you got to be able to have some sort of energy and excitement and thinking that it's going to be good. It's going to be fine. It's all going to work out. And the more you embarrass yourself at home, regardless of what you do away from home, but the more you embarrass yourself at home, the quicker you are going to have people turn on you. I'm a season ticket holder. I am. And I pay a lot of good money, my hard-earned money, for season tickets. And it's really annoying and frustrating to go to those games that me and so many of you pay a lot of money to and see the type of effort and performances that have been put forth. If it happens that way, the test is going to be towards Hunter Yurichek and the administration. How serious are you? If you get embarrassed at home again, how serious are you? Are you serious or are you wanting to save money? Are you serious or are you accepting average? Are you serious or are you just complacent and you do not care? Guess we'll find out here in the next few weeks. I can't wait. We'll talk about basketball, specifically Nellie Davis on the other side of the break. So stay with us here on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. All right, all you Razorback fans out there, I got to tell you about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small per, uh, business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for that role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else. Even in those who aren't actively looking for a new job, but might be open to a perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. LinkedIn knows also that small businesses are wearing so many hats and may not have the time or resources to hire. But LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They just even launched a new feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process easier and quicker. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. We're also brought to you by Home Field and Home Field Apparel. Listen, Razorback fans, I know that you all love some vintage Razorback gear. You all love that slobbering hog. You all love the hog leaning on the A, running through the A. Uh, you love all those old logos that Razorbacks have because it reminds us of better times, more fun times things that went a lot further and meant a lot more. Well, luckily for you, you can still get on your apparel, the greatest of apparel, and it's with Homefield Apparel. So if you go to homefieldapparel.com, you can check out all the great Razorback gear that they have. They got bomber jackets, they got different t-shirts, and the fit and the quality of them are tremendous. You will not be disappointed. So you got to check them out today. Just go to homefieldapparel.com to see all the things that they have to offer for Razorbacks. Enter my promo code PIG24. I said that really weird. I don't know why. It's PIG24. Try to put some ump behind it. P-I-G-2-4. Simple as that. Enter in that promo code. You'll be able to see all the different Razorback apparel that you can choose from. And I promise you won't be disappointed. It's Homefield Apparel. Check them out today at homefieldapparel.com. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, basketball season, we know, is upon us. And uh, we'll have uh, Curtis Wilkerson a little later this afternoon give you a preview of Arkansas and Baylor. So uh, I'll leave that to him. But I did want to bring up something specifically about Nellie Davis uh, because I was talking with a friend of mine last night about the game that, Ar that Nellie Davis had against Purdue. Purdue. That was a year ago. Against uh, Lipscomb. I don't know why I said Purdue. Against Lipscomb. And how I felt like it went and, and everything. Well, Nellie Davis has, without question, the expectation of coming into this school 
to be that level of player. He went to a Final Four at FAU. He was averaging you know, 18 points a game, whatever it was there while he was there. Uh, just an incredible talent and a guy who can shoot, he can score from anywhere on the floor, and really has some uh, some great capabilities to be a game-changing type player. But with a lot of pressure on him, it's just interesting to see, okay, well, with that pressure, will he be able to translate that to John Calipari, to Arkansas, to the SEC, and to all that? I think so. I think he will. Because last year, he averaged 18 points a game, as well as six rebounds a game, and three assists, and three turnovers. So he's pretty even there. But also a, a, a steal and a half per game. He played 32 minutes. But the year before that, he was playing 26 minutes a game. Also shot 48% from the field, too. Also shot 48% there. And had five rebounds, 13.8 points a game. Five rebounds, two assists, two turnovers, two steals. So the guy's just been, for three straight seasons, a, a great player. And his percentages is that's really impressive. Last year, he shot 41.5% from the three-point line. 41.5%. That's incredible. He's 25% this year. One, one of four. But 41% from three and shot 85%, 86% from free throw line. So when you see someone with those numbers, and it's been consistent too, so it's not just like, oh, he did it in a one-year shot in the pan, that's it. He's done it pretty consistently over at FAU and was able to make tournament runs and be a great player and was the number one player coming out of the transfer portal. So will he live up to that expectation? Can he live up to that hype? Well, the short answer is yes, he can. Because in major college basketball, I know it's FAU. I know he's not playing against the greatest of competition all the time. But he's an old player. He's a vintage player. He's a, he's a guy who was a freshman in 2020. He's been playing, this is his fifth year in college. And he's played, his, his freshman year, he played 23 games. So it's not like he's just new and has no idea about college basketball. He does. But I think with given the circumstances of Cal and, and how he approaches the game, I think he can really flourish. The biggest question, though, is going to be, there's a lot of other talent, so how does he fit into that? How does he Is he going to be the dominating one? Is he going to be the guy that just takes the ball over and, no, is he going to be taking minutes away from other guys? Like, what, what's that going to look like overall? What's the rotation situation going to look like? Nellie Davis is a guy that needs to touch touch the ball every single time on the court. He, he's that good. But I'm telling you right now, folks, and this isn't exactly like going out on a limb prediction, but I'm just telling you right now, if Nellie Davis, if Nellie Davis is able to live up to the expectation and to the hype, is able to answer that call, and to have that type of game, that type of season, into what he's previously had. If he's able to do that, folks, Arkansas is going to have a phenomenal year. Phenomenal. If Nellie Davis gets it going, and, he, and I'm not saying he has to get to 18.2 points a game like he did a year ago, but just say, for instance, he did. Say he did. If he had 18 points, six and a half rebounds per game, three assists, steal and a half, shooting 48% from the field and 41.5% from the three-point line, not only is he going to more than likely be the player of the year, but he's also going to be leading a team in Arkansas that's competing not only for an SEC title, but a national title. Arkansas would be a one, two, three seed at lowest if he has that type of year. But again, it's about figuring this out in the early going. It's about figuring it out. I think that there's time, and I think that they will, but watching his game, you see in the early parts of it why he is so successful and why people are so excited about him. He's just got to continue to get better and develop. But we'll talk a little bit about the games this year for basketball and what it means and why it's nerve-wracking here in just a second. So stay with us on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. All right, Razorback fans, with Robin Hood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up all the financial favors of the 1%. Robin Hood Gold allows others to get the rates and the perks usually reserved for the high society. 
Now the resourceful individual with Robinhood Gold can earn the very liberal rate of 4.5% APY on uninvested cash and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides the privileges of a high net worth for any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. Sign up today at robinhoodgold.com gold. Terms apply. For product-specific disclosures, visit robinhood.com gold. In- investing involves risk. Rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold, LLC. We're also brought to you, of course, by our friends over at FanDuel. You're ready to tackle the NFL action as well as college football action, all the action, college basketball, everything. With America's number one sports book, it's FanDuel. Right now, customers who bet $5 get a $150 bonus bet if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on in the NFL, college football, all in one place. So when you get the hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place all of your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com right now to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Okay, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Um, I want to talk about this Baylor game, not going into it a lot, but just preparing Razorback fans. I want to prepare you for something. I want to prepare you for the possibility of you losing to Baylor. I know you all know it's, it's possible, but I also want you to understand that this early in college fo- basketball especially, you don't know what you have in a team. You want to know you beat Lipscomb. But Baylor's a different animal. They got smoked by Gonzaga. But they're a really good team. They've got a really good coach. So I want to win. You want to win. Everybody wants Arkansas to win. But if Arkansas loses this game to Baylor, it is not the end of the world. It's not. It's completely and totally fine. Because to me... It's always about the end game. It's always about the end result. And it's going to hurt you, Razorback fans, because you are going to hear about it from Kentucky fans. It's just how it is. The second you lose, they're going to flood your mentions on social media. They're going to be chirping all over the place. You're going to have their media chirping too. All of that stuff, it's going to be happening 100%. So when that does happen, you have to hold it together. I know it's asking a lot, but you got to hold it together. Because it's not a surprise. It's not anything that's uncommon. It it, it can happen. It can happen to anybody. This is a game that Arkansas, to be honest, is probably set up to lose. Because if Baylor would have beaten Gonzaga, I'd feel better about it. But I just don't think Baylor's going to take sitting down getting smoked twice by two different teams. They're going to come out with a vengeance and they're going to come out motivated. But when you lose, it's going to be okay. Think about the end game. Always think about the end game. I say this a lot, but I'm going to say it again. Think about the years that Arkansas went to the Elite Eight, Sweet 16, and all of that. Remember in the regular season? Those had a lot of games that were not that fun. I remember the year that Arkansas went to the Sweet 16 and beat Kansas. They lost to an absolutely atrocious LSU team. They looked terrible against certain opponents. They lost to a Missouri team that ended up being better than what people thought, but a game they shouldn't have lost. They had some bad losses. Just like they did in the year they, in both years, that they went to the lead eight. They had, at times, bad losses. But you know what you don't remember? Those bad losses. Is that what you bring up every single time when you're crowing and bragging about those postseason runs? Is that what you do? No, you don't. I know you don't, because I don't. What you bring up is going to the Elite Eight. What you bring up is going to the Sweet 16. And so it's going to be the same thing this year. If Arkansas makes a run to the Final Four or something like that, you know what you're not going to remember? Arkansas getting smoked by Baylor in the second game of the year. It's not going to take your joy and fun out of that run in the NCAA tournament at all if you lose to Baylor in the second game of the season. 
Look at the end results. Focus on the end results because the end results is the only thing that matters. Appreciate all of you listening and watching in to the Locked on Razor Rex podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at John Neighbors Show for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel next Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you then.